Welcome back, everyone. Uh, this is What the Podcast. Uh, I'm Ryan. I'm one of your hosts, and this is... I'm John. John. And um, we're just really excited to be back, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. What the Podcast. This is our second week just <laughs> out, straight out the gate. Some things you know? have changed. Some should, things have should, changed. We should address that in the visual, if you for the visual audience. The first What the Podcast <laughs> premiere... Uh, you know, things looked different. It was just a regular uh, run-of-the-mill podcast. And um, this week, a Christmas card has thrown up all over our studio. Yeah. You know what? And if you're watching, enjoy. Take a, just, just take a second to, to take it all in. You might hear our crackling fire. <laughs> you might have noticed our lovely mantle that, John, you want to tell us how... How long it took you um, putting this little number together? I'm a little uncomfortable sharing that number. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. I'll <laughs> tell you. Uh, it took me a good hour. I would say the the uh, other half of a full hour. It's, Not... it's incredibly <laughs> impressive. I'm very, Thank very you. pleased with the set. The easiest part was setting up the fire here. The hardest part was taping all these fake wood and uh, brick but you know what i love about this though is that this is now going to live in the set it for really a full month for well more than maybe month. forever maybe, maybe. <laughs> well, yeah we'll i take love it, it so much <laughs> just, it could be forever uh, uh the decorations can change but just like a real uh real home yeah no i, I love it in fireplace here. Uh, shout out to our producers kara and olivia yes they, they made this place look who amazing. actually you know what they did so great last week they got microphones yeah, this let's week hear let's hear a little sound off go ahead hi um hi okay great <laughs> all right that's enough okay. that's, uh, that's thank that's you, that's too much. you we'll, we'll call you when we need you <laughs> yes Wow. And let's talk about why uh, they are on microphones. Last week, last week we, mm -hmm. we mm -hmm. had them looking up and fact-checking, yep. you might say, mm -hmm. to some degree. On yes. some of the things, believe it or not, we're not experts. That's and right. I know that comes right. as a surprise to a lot of people uh, that are listening for this. It's our team Google. Yeah, is and the they, thing. they're going to go ahead and Google anything we need to know. Last week, I still can remember that Hippo's Milk is pink. It's pink milk. That's correct. Unfortunately, we were unable to get a bottle of it here today, but that is still in the works. And we are, yeah, we are working on that. We are for sure full sending that. Um, but yeah, it's it, it, we know we've we've changed up our. Oh, look at that. Oh, that's right. We are producing. We no, learned talk, a lot. Tell us. Yeah. What have I, you pulled up here? I just Olivia? pulled up a picture of Nicolas Cage and Johnny Depp. Um, just a quick recall to last week. Thank you. I really very appreciate good that. throwback to last week. But you know what? Uh, here at what the podcast we are we're forward thinkers mm -hmm. you know we're always thinking about the next thing we are and uh speaking of the next thing what's the next we want to remind everyone that uh, our campaign towards a a <laughs> deal with poddex so hard to get we're really poddex if you're listening <laughs> please you know just hey drop us a line when i bought these um i messed up the shipping thing i had to email the i, I assume the owner i'm mm -hmm. not 100 mm -hmm. percent and he, in his little tagline, it says, "Like we, I will, sp I only sponsor podcasts that use the pod decks." And so, sure, of course, we're using them, you know. So I'm going to go ahead and email him a link to this episode mm -hmm. and the last mm -hmm. episode and any future episodes. We're going to get a sponsorship. We're going to don't get know it. how big. Doesn't really matter. It's the principle of the thing. I guess it's the principle. Mm -hmm. And you know what? I have a question for you. Go ahead from pod decks this week, and it is, mm -hmm. who would play you? In the movie about yourself. Mm. Who'd play you in a movie? That's a really great question. Um, first of all, thank you for asking that. Um, <laughs> second of all, I'm not. <laughs> You're <really> welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Who would play me? I'm not a really, I'm not really good at remembering actors, actors and names. actresses' name. You know, like mm -hmm, I, when mm -hmm. I, when I think of, well, you know what? I'll tell you who I think. Okay. Give okay. it to me. This is and then this is a stretch. He'd have to grow a beard for it, but he kind of has one now. Okay, Steve Carell. What do you think? Does he have? Is 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 that a good? Person I think I could see me? it. You know, and don't don't just tell me that. I want you to be honest. What do you think? He, I mean, he's got a similar look. I think, yeah, and he does. You know, he sports the beard every once in a while because the beard is is kind of an iconic. It is. It's a pretty John thing it's, about you. I've had it for so long. Um, that I don't really remember what I look like without it. Every once in a while, I'll shave it, and people will be like, "We're we're not friends anymore." You Do you know? immediately regret it? Yeah, yeah. I have a, I have a, I have a sh like the most baby face. I I, I have the same problem. 
And also, I'll be honest, I haven't quite figured out fitness yet. So, you know, when I <laughs> shave, this is real tea. This is what the no, podcast is. I'm, no, I'm ready you know? for it. I'm ready for it. I get the double chin, not a super attractive moment, you know, but then again, I'm engaged. So I guess, I guess I've kind of made it right. <laughs> Pretty much I locked mean, that one. <laughs> right. I should just shave it now. Who cares? Uh, it's not a, I don't, I don't keep it because it's self-conscious. I should just clarify. I do like having a beard. Sure. But, um, that is one of the pitfalls of shaving it off. And I'm with you on that. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think similar to you, I also like, I, I do the beard. I also had the long hair, you know? Yeah. And it's this thing where you have this beard and you're like, I just need to shave it off. Like it, it gets to a point where you're like, I'm hot. Like maybe mm -hmm. it's time for a change and you do it. And the minute I do it, you regret it. It's an instant regret. You used to have long hair and I really liked that long hair. Why'd you change out of that? You know, at the time it was really unmanageable. It was oh, really? just like, well, and I have really curly hair too. So and it's so, long. It, it's really longer than it looks. Yeah, it is. And, and the, you know, the time you t it takes to, I was just wearing it up all the time. And when I didn't, it was just like hot. And then it was kind of a similar thing. I was like, I cut it off and I was like, well, that sucks. <laughs> That's one thing I, I probably won't go back to is long hair. Mm -hmm. I had long mm -hmm. hair for, uh, I, I, I originally started growing it with the intention to see how, what it would look like long. And mm -hmm. then also mm -hmm. in that I wanted to donate it. And so right, sure. I, I got to like 12 and a half, 13 inches. And, be, and that's because I used to think you had to ponytail it, right? You had sure. to ponytail it. Mm -hmm. And and then that you cut the ponytail and that's where it came from. But for guys, we don't we don't want to have we don't care about having existing hair. So right. that's where they they were able to get more by sectioning it off and whatever. It doesn't matter. But it's fantastic. I'll never go back to long hair. You probably mm -hmm. will. I, I think I'm on my way. The okay. the problem is the in between where it's like not long hair, but it's not mm. short hair anymore. Yeah. That's hard to manage also. <laughs> it yeah. just kind of come off as like puffy Bozo the Clown. That'll do it. Nonsense. Hey, you mind if I speak to Alexa for a second? Hey, I, w I would. <laughs> Go ahead, please. <laughs> Alexa, ask Geneva to turn off the AC. Sorry about that. It's all about real stuff around here. You know? What? Uh, wow. She turns it off. At yeah. what point are we just full smart house? Well, I'll tell you, like, um, thanks for asking that. Yeah, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. I, I try to get this place as, as programmed as possible. Um, it's because I think it's so cool. And this is, this is a great conversation <laughs> for us to talk about. It is. I'm Technology ready for it. is insane. You know, the fact that I, you essentially have like Alexa is essentially a virtual assistant yep. and can look up anything at any time, you know, and then also she controls it gets a little weird though, because I think a lot of people were f freaked out by it. Mm -hmm. You know, are you freaked you know, out by it? The 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 only part that starts freaking me out, and and you know, we've had we had the Neuralink conversation already. We've had that not one. on the podcast, but we've had that conversation already. Yeah. Um, the the part that starts getting weird to me is we were there's one in my parents' house, and you know, we were like talking about music or something. We were trying to play music. And it was like, oh, if you like music, you should try it. Like unprecedented ad starts doing an ad. Yikes. And it's like, okay, I already bought this thing. It's already mm -hmm. in my house. Like, and now it's just, I, I don't know. I mean, I guess like anything else, you watch a YouTube video, there's an ad, you watch a, there's commercials on TV. It's just like anything else. So why wouldn't there be? But mm -hmm. it just kind of catches you off guard. It's like your your couch starts giving you advertising for like couch cushions or something. You know? Yeah, it's I like, think I think there, to a certain degree that's happening already with our cell phones. Mm -hmm. And uh, and a lot. I was talking to somebody about it the other day, and they were like, you know, Amazon's probably selling the recordings, right? They're probably selling the recordings to all these companies, and and then they're using it as data. And and in my head, I don't think that Amazon is dumb enough to sell the audio recordings that that Alexa, I don't want to say a wake word. I, I keep trying to yeah. not say her that name. The machine, <laughs> you know, that the machine, the uh, puck, records, the hockey puck. <laughs> right. Because I think they realize how, um, risky of a move that would be like, all it would have to be is one news story of somebody who was able to acquire random recordings mm -hmm. from the machine. Yep. And it would, I think it would completely ruin Amazon in my opinion. And and if you really think about it too, like what what do they need to sell it for? They've yeah. got this gold mine, which is every single one of mind you, it, in concept already, it's it's whoever's got one has already subscribed to it. They're already like, Okay, I'm buying Amazon products, mm -hmm. I am, you know, 
I want like smart technology in my house or to whatever extent. Mm -hmm. And now they're, they're just mining your data for their own. Okay, great. Like now we know what this person wants to buy. We know what this person likes, what this person, you know, shops for, Mm -hmm. and we can use that information to sell more Amazon products. Absolutely. An alternative perspective too. Uh, and people, some people don't understand this. I, I actually enjoy that ads are marketed for me um, rather than random. That is, that's a hot take right there. Really? You like, you like uh, ads. I guess I haven't, I hadn't considered that, but. Well, think about it because I mean, the risk is. What's the risk, right? They know what you want to buy and mm-hmm. get you to buy, mm-hmm. right? And you buy something that maybe you don't need, you know? Sure. Um, but I have come across so many cool companies mm-hmm. that I would have never come across if I hadn't been marketed to buy Instagram. Um, and so there, there's, you know, a, a couple of, I won't name them because they're not getting free promos. Uh, get, like, <laughs> right. Okay. Of course. Listen, of course. If you're on my newsfeed and you know who you are, um, contact us. The only thing us. we're going to push to our listeners <laughs> It's pod decks. Yeah. Pod decks is the uh, number one. Uh, <laughs> I hope. Oh, my gosh. If podcast will if pod decks will sponsor us, I will be wow. on cloud nine. But anyways, <laughs> I, I back to what we we're talking about and then we'll move on because this was an uh, totally unprecedented. <laughs> this is <laughs> unprompted. Did. Look, and that's kind of the theme of this. This podcast. Is yeah. And if you have any questions that you want to know about us, I set up our email today. I didn't. I forgot to tell you. It was fantastic. So you can you the, what the podcast at Gmail letters to the was editor. taken. So it's podcast what the at gmail.com. <laughs> that is not confusing at all. <laughs> so I don't I, I listen, I podcast made a command decision. The? I hope you're not upset about no, it. No, I'm I'm thrilled. So if you want to email us podcast what the at gmail.com and we'll maybe put a little thing underneath mm-hmm, wherever mm-hmm. we're at if you're watching. Um but it also will be in the description below. But yeah, email us any questions or any topics that you want us to cover because we we are Men of the people, you know. That's right. We we want right. to hear what you. We'll talk. I think about we're anything. setting up the uh, the socials. Yeah, we, so are we got some socials social that we'll have that for sure. If you stay tuned probably, for that, you've probably gotten to this podcast mm-hmm. through a social media post. Mm-hmm. If we can be honest, that's right. That's right. So you're probably already following it. But anyways. that being said, yeah, you had a, a thought as we transitioned out of this. Um. I, so yeah, I was I was just gonna say the company is like I I like being marketed to. I think. Some people view that as like scary, like they're listening to me or whatever, right? But like, I love it. I think like I'm getting marketed with two companies that I like, that I agree with. And now if I started getting ads that I was like, you know, either offended by or things that I didn't didn't really care about, I'd probably be more annoyed. But like what we're using right now for the video podcast, Sling Studio, that got marketed to me through a Facebook ad. And I and I started looking at their at all their stuff and then I ended up buying it. Now the one thing I do wish they had was the ability to let Instagram know that I bought it. Cause now I, I got ads for like eight months afterwards and I'm like, like how do I, I know. tell somebody like, I got it. I bought it. I you got it. Worked, Thanks. You know? Um so I <laughs> I that's guess an unpopular opinion, I guess. Well and that that is the thing you're you're right on is like in concept it's mm-hmm. not like they're taking this data for like a negative way like they're not going to use it now against you it's not like i i guess that's the like the funny thing like oh the fbi is listening to me through mm-hmm. my computer through my yeah. alexa or whatever um oh i hope she didn't hear me oh my gosh she heard you sorry sorry babe it's good um but they're really they are using it in a way that is like yeah we want your money is is the thing we're, we're selling more products here that's why yeah. we want your what you like so that we'll just make more of that you know mm-hmm. it's like supply and demand built into this thing yeah i i again i if it were me and i I think um if i can speak a little bit to the like the human psyche i think we're we're ultimately automatically kind of put on guard of like my information's being stolen or my information's being used or sold right Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. i and i agree with that like to some degree there is information that should not be available and there there are like social security numbers things like that like all that so by the way what's your social yeah, it's a four. <laughs> I Just think, four. It's I think, a single number. Wow, you're incredible. Yeah, I, think I was on the forefront kind of, of that whole movement. <laughs> I think that kind of data, of course, has its place to be secure and privacy. But I think the reality is, I don't. I I, I think to some degree, a, comp- a lot of companies are out there to get you to buy their stuff. Uh, at the same time, I think social media, it understanding what you like and giving things that they that you think will like is more of a personable effect rather than a like 
fear based, you know, I don't know. Maybe maybe I'm wrong. Well, and it's, it's really an an old concept, you know, like give, give the people what they want Mm -hmm. is really the ultimate thing, you know, like for these big corporate, these big companies that are just trying to move products. Like you said, like it's, it's just a new way of doing a poll. Hey, what do you like? Mm -hmm. What do you buy? What are you shopping for? Mm -hmm. It is, it it gets a little weird because it's right in your pocket, you know, but what do like your information like what do you even own anyways like mm-hmm. i don't know yeah i think it's a little <laughs> that gets no, a little I agree. too I, have you seen the, the documentary the great hack no haven't okay seen it. watch it by next week and we'll talk about it write that down i don't want to talk anymore about this my legal pen. i think i'm getting signs from the producers that we should probably move on um i think one thing that was totally unprompted but mm-hmm, i loved mm-hmm. that conversation i think it was it was good and uh, one thing i want to address too is it's Christmas in here. I mean, we, we, we did talk about that a little bit, but I want to know, um, this is a super light question. What, what does Christmas mean to you, Ryan? <laughs> what does Christmas mean to me? That is a great question. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Christmas is, wow. I was, um, I was ready for that one. <laughs> I know. What does Christmas mean? Christmas is a great time to, um, you know, it's the end of the year and mm-hmm. you're, you, your family's together. Everybody's <laughs> feeling good. Yeah. It's a built-in happy time, you yeah, know? I agree. It sh- at least it should be, you know? This time to kind of relax, kind mm-hmm. of refocus, kind of, um, you know, remember, like, hey, what is, you know... Kind of, like, che- I guess check in with yourself. Like, okay, this is what's important to me. Mm-hmm. Let's close out this year on a good note. And I, I think that is really the... The true meaning of Christmas. Thank you. Is to really, I I don't know, I guess refocus. I don't know why that's like keeps coming to my mind, but like just refocus and and go on vacation. I agree. I know. (laughs) I I love the way you said that. I think Christmas is so important this year specifically. Uh I mean, as we mentioned early on in in our, in our first episode, you know, this has been a challenging year for everybody. And that's, uh, you know, it, it wasn't necessarily the kind of birthplace of this concept for the show, but it for sure drives, uh, I think, the a lot of the inspiration for us starting this. Is Definitely. We, we want to be challenged. We want to start something. We want to get outside of our comfort zone. And this year has been the year of of pushing the comfort zone, you know, and and I think Christmas it has a, a, an important role to play this mm-hmm. year in the sense that, you know, like you said, refocus. We, we spent the last nine, 10 months, yeah. uh, eight months, Truly. I don't know, stuck at home. Uh, and, and for some of us, we were stuck with family and that, mm-hmm. and that, that caused a lot of growth and a lot of, you know, in, you know, maybe anxiety if you're me. And, uh, yeah. but then also some people were, were stuck outside, you know, you mm-hmm. weren't, you weren't allowed to see your family. And, uh, so I think that refocus allows you to readjust in the sense that Christmas is going to be a, now a time, I think a lot of, rebuilding, reimagining mm-hmm. your relationships um, because you spent all this time contemplating whether you wanted to or not. You were contemplating the idea of not being able to see people that you love, mm-hmm. you know? And uh, I'm getting emotional. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> no, I don't have an For the audio listeners, uh, John is I wiped weeping. my eye. So, uh, He's uh, weeping. He Tears is, are streaming down his needs, face. you know, some tissues, I guess. <laughs> uh, but I think you're right. I, you're right. It hits right on the head. Uh, it, you hit the nail on the head is what I meant to say. But... Um, but like on a funner sense, on a very lighter side, what's what's your favorite part of Christmas? Like what what about Christmas uh, makes you smile? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I I love getting the presents ready. I love giving presents. You love giving. I presents. do. I love giving presents. It is stressful for me. Okay. But like getting it all together, and and I guess it's more of the, you know, the anticipation mm-hmm. for me is so much better than the actual day of christmas like christmas is a great time to just you know be with the family and open presents together and whatever it is but the build-up to it for me Mm -hmm. is so much more exciting yeah you know you get to the hardest to get for gift wise it's got to be my dad really he's you know he's got everything and he obviously he's happy with whatever he gets but um he's just a no-nonsense kind of guy when it comes to stuff you know and it he's hard to uh it's hard to pin down and yeah you one of our producers, Olivia, you guys are siblings. That's right. Um, Hi. you know, you, uh, you like siblings, you know, mm-hmm. For, first time mm-hmm. you met on the show, but it's been great. Yeah. Uh, Olivia, can you speak to that? Is, is dad the hardest to get to? For sure. The hardest. 
he never yeah he never really needs anything he never but is always you know like he's he's stoked to get whatever he gets so that is easy but yeah. for me you know i i don't want to just give him something like you want it to be meaningful. i want it to be meaningful and right. something he's really like interested in and yeah i'll tell you this my mom tells me exactly what she wants <laughs> she's the opposite and, some, she's and the easiest i think to give to i think really? last year i bought her gift with her I think she, we were at she's Target like, and she was like, this. "Hey, you want to just get this for me for Christmas?" And then go ahead and wrap it up. And yeah, you're okay. Like, but that's always that's always a good one. That too. makes me happy too. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I'll tell. Be honest with you. I'm really terrible at gift giving, um, and it's never been a strength of mine. I I, I think I like the idea of giving. Like mm-hmm. like that 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 part of me is something that I think kind of transcends just Christmas time. Like I, whenever I have stuff that I don't need anymore or if i've upgraded I, I i love the idea of just like passing it on to somebody sure there is a place of course for selling like in some in some instances it's like it's just too expensive to sell you know, yeah to, to not sell oh yeah um but i i love that idea of giving i'm just really bad at christmas gifts mm-hmm. the hardest one to shop for in my family is um uh that's a tough one it's probably you know my mom Mm-hmm. Um, because she like, is, is kind of like your dad in the way that she doesn't really want anything. Mm-hmm. Um, and she always tells us like, I want time. And I'm like, well, that's the one thing I don't have. I'm just kidding. <laughs> just yeah. joking. You're like, well, that's just not going to happen, mom. Well, anything uh, else? I got a podcast to work anything on. Anything so. that I can buy on Amazon. Um, yeah, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, you know, she, yeah, she's, she's a tough one to buy, but every once in a while, you know, and I'm also, I ascribe, and you can, I, I'm interested to see your side. I ascribe to the idea that like, I like just buying th- people things throughout the year, you know? And, and in the same way, I've gotten to a point where, you know, people are like, what do you want for Christmas? Mm-hmm. I'm like, I, nothing. Like I, I'm at a point where I have disposable income. Yeah. You're like, and I'm like, you're kind of rich. rich. I mean, I, yeah. I'm kind of, I'm rich. Yeah. So, so what you're saying is, yeah, we're flex, <laughs> but okay. Do you well, have the if gap I need in your, something, in your list? What's that? Do you have that natural gap where it's like, I have one thing that's three two two dollars and fifty cents yep and then the rest of my list is 500 and above absolutely yeah, yeah right? for sure because you're you're a musician and, and yeah a, and everybody in the room here is a, a vlogger and that's or whatever, tough you know? being like hey you know if you really want to get me something i want this year uh give me a set of uh sm7bs they're 300 bucks a piece just but, uh but you know hey that's what i want yeah, yeah, and it's so hard because that's <laughs> really what that like that's the reality like it, you know as a podcaster and you're and you're a musician like the gear is that's what you really want right mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. the reality is like that's not a feasible gift it's just you know? not gonna happen that's i'm it, probably yeah. not gonna get the nord keyboard this year from santa it's just not gonna i would love to but do you feel weird um like asking for things for christmas or or do you do that or, or do you or like do people ask you well you just, my uh and i will introduce uh the last person on our uh, our team here kara yeah. Is our at the booth hey. Uh-huh. person? Hey, Kara. Hey. Uh, Kara sends me a Christmas list. She does. She's straight full, up. Is it a full list? It's a full list. Okay, I it's only full. do that because <laughs> it's, your family asks. Well, me to. it's ideas. <laughs> so it one. is. It's not like get me these seven things. Yeah. For Christmas, but it's like I do like the ideas. Like, hey, if I got anything on this list, yeah, I would be happy. Yeah, and Have then you I, I also list provide this year? links. I did. I, I just got one. The uh, list came out this year. So what's on your out. list, Kara? List just dropped. Um, it's very short, actually. Really? It's like a couple makeup things. Um, the big thing that is usually. this year is a surfboard. That's like my. That's Kara's like trying my, to get a surfboard. Because like, you're a surfer. We are. Yeah, we yeah. we surf oh, pretty extensively this summer. And me. Are you a surfer? I mean. Not to brag. John, uh, you're going to have to come out with us. You guys, I Next can I summer. tell you something? I'm ready for it. I don't want to break in on this. We're going to come back to what you else you want for Christmas, Kara, because it's oh, important good. to me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I really want to learn how to surf. I, I have no idea how to, and I think <laughs> I've maybe tried once or twice, but just something about the idea of like, getting out into the open ocean terrifies me, but also makes me really want to like be... Oh, oh yeah. Talk no, to I, me about it. I'm I mean, totally with you on that. Yeah, you know, this this summer was fun because these guys kind of like picked it up this summer and we're like, you know, hey, there's nothing else going on. Let's uh let's surf. Yeah. <laughs> and that's uh, you we live 2 minutes from the beach. Yeah. And it just was a nice uh it was a, it was a nice summer of just learning and getting better and um we surfed down in Ocean Beach right by the pier and mm-hmm. it it is it's totally that just the the getting out and sometimes even if the surf is 
is trash like the waves are bad you know the water's cold like it's just fun being out there with other mm -hmm. surfers and just you know sitting on the board it seems like a community too is it that, is oh absolutely yeah yeah i'm getting and a when you get tired you can just sit in the ocean and relax on your board and oh have totally fun. you know really? it's, yeah so it is yeah you, just being out there is is a it's a vibe I, Maybe I will we say. should do like a like a YouTube video series of me a team outing surf. of you. Yeah, me learning how to surf. That would be fantastic. I'm willing to embarrass myself on camera for. <laughs> we're this in a we're show. in a king tide right now, so it's kind of not great right a now. A little bit a trash. King tide? Uh, you know, it's just he's just throwing terms. Out. I love <laughs> yeah. it. Like, we're in a king <laughs> tide. We're in a, right now. We're in a so full beam reach. So happen. you know, I don't know what a full beam reach is. I just pulled it. Oh, no, that's that no, was good. Beam reach. I think it's a sailing reference. I think you're right. Okay. Anyways, good. What's 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 the King Triton? Uh, What's it called? No, it's king just Triton. it's just a certain time of the year, the season, and the, What's it called the waves are the King, king tide. tide. I can tell you're serious. It's about a Hawaiian I hope I'm thing. Not making no, 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 no. <laughs> you said I, King Tide. It's a, it's a uh, King Tide. And don't make fun of it again. And uh, if you please. ever back talk to King Tide, <laughs> it will come for you. We're we're currently recording in Santee, and it's it'll come, come out. Yeah, yeah. I, I feel it. So uh, what does that mean? Sorry, it's just tide? not not great for surf and waves. Is is the short of it? It's just just can a really we, can low we tide. Google King Tide. Yeah. Uh, I'd, lo I'd love to know the official. I mean, I, I believe you. It has to do with. I know it has to do with the Santa Ana winds. All right. Oh, this just says casual effect. You wanna? Oh, you well, don't have to throw it up on the screen. Just just tell us. A King Tide is an especially high spring tide, especially the Perigian, Perigian, Perigian spring tides. Sure. Okay. Which occur three or four times a year. King tide is not a scientific term, nor is it used in a scientific context. So oh, it's, well, oh, it's a slang. Okay. No, slang it's for sure, slang. That's what the locals uh, say. We're at Especially a king tide. high spring tide. Wouldn't that be in the well, spring? Well, it's you know, here in San Diego. Uh, yeah, we don't get seasons so like the they do. The reality is, it's bad for surfing. It's not good. Okay, it's not great for sure. So we'll wait till the king we're gonna wait tide till is over. <laughs> we're gonna wait till I, that that little king tide just gonna <laughs> it also on that by. sounds so terrifying. Just from a <laughs> from a non surfer's point of view, it's like we're in a king tide. I'm like, no, I'll see not you gonna next happen. Time. I'll wait <laughs> not for summer messing with that one. Yeah. I think you should just jump right in, John. You, you probably think so? should. I think this uh, is your I time. will be honest. My brother took surfing lessons when we were kids, and mm -hmm. I went every. It was every Sunday, which is so random, and I would go and I watched, and I thought. I could do this mm -hmm. so easy, right? Totally. And then I think there was also a, a really popular surfing Disney movie at some point in time. Teen Beach movie. I probably was way too old or for it. Or Johnny I did Tsunami. See it. I did see it. Depending on what age you were. <laughs> I was too old for it. I can tell you that much. It was probably Teen Beach movie then. Teen Beach movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Which is also a... I love that did movie. Did I date myself by mentioning Johnny Tsunami? Also Johnny Tsunami. <laughs> Johnny Tsunami. <laughs> that's good. No, that's great. Okay, so yeah. So, I mean, you just get out there. We'll just get like a, do what Kara did. Kara picked up a board this summer on Craigslist. You know, no, just no. inexpensive. To, oh, not on Craigslist. It was an old board. It was no, actually, we got it from your brother. So. It was like. Oh, so you don't want people to think that you're spoiled for asking for a new board. Oh, this no. Don't, board I she had to schlep it for a while with a To be clear, I did look on Craigslist for boards for a very, very long time. Well, but we, have uh, we you found it out. You strike me as a bargain shopper. Isn't that, oh, that's true. Psh, thrifty. I she is. Thrifty. That's what we Which love. Which makes uh, Christmas shopping uh, pretty easy. Just <laughs> any old <laughs> garage sale. Any. Old. So you're asking for a retail <laughs> surfboard? Is that what I'm hearing? A new surfboard because yeah. the one oh, that absolutely. I have right now is like a Costco foam bo foam board. Uh -huh. So I would want a nice. And, hard uh, you deserve it. Let me surfboard. tell you right now, John. You, you play it. your cards right. Uh, you could be getting yourself a, a Costco foam, foam board. You know what? Yeah, you're right. Uh, hey, I love this. Upgrade so then I can. That's yeah. right. That's I, right. I have a feeling that if I get into surfing, though, I will go way too hard. Do you have this problem where you go mm -hmm. hard in hobbies? Absolutely, 100%. And I really did this uh, this quarantine. I'll tell you what, COVID. Oh, you, tell me I, the hardest hobbies you went in quarantine. That's I great. had... Um, I was doing some Twitch streaming for a while. That was fun. I saw that. Yeah. It was a it was a time. <laughs> so tell me what that's like starting out though as a Twitch streamer because I always imagined it's su it's a super blow to your morale because I feel like you're not getting a lot of viewers. Is it is true? like so not you in general. No, in general because it's a medium that's like so there's such a divide between just starting out yeah. and like the the top people like mm -hmm. um 
Ninja, I think, is the number one uh, <laughs> Twitch streamer. And he has, like, uh, Liv- can- Olivia, fact checker, can we confirm Ninja's numbers? Ninja's it's astronomical. Numbers. and But the viewership is so fleeting because it's only, like, live streams and, and highlight videos. Yeah. So you're either on or you're not. Okay. And... That's I, I imagine that's tough. But yeah, so you absolutely. started out. What was I was it just like? you know I was just playing a couple of games. I, I got a little webcam. I got a uh, um, you know so I I play on the Switch. Uh-huh. I played some. I did some Fortnite. You know I did a couple of. Uh, I never played Fortnite. Uh, don't do it. It's, okay, I'll it's, stay away. It's had its day. I think it's it's on its way out. Yeah, probably not, but it should be. It's becoming yeah. mainstream. Do we have the ninjas numbers or no? I'm looking it up currently. Um. I think he might be live right now. <laughs> It'll tell you what his numbers are if you. He's probably oh, up 16. there. Oh, 16.3 million followers. Okay, no. so that's like the number one guy, 16 million. Like watching. I why did I think it would be more? You know, it, and like I said, it's a it's a relatively still new developing. Like yeah, you know, uh, platform, I guess. Yeah, mm-hmm. and so. I don't, I don't know. You, you tried know? it out. So you I jumped in. Out. I think the most I had at once was like 10 people. And that's <laughs> what's cool is is everybody's just Chuckles on the, the uh, <laughs> you know, anyone that's playing right now. Oh, sorry. That's our uh, our set piece is going off. Our crackling fire. <laughs> our yeah, crackling yeah. fire. That's really crackling. That's uh, going to go ahead. That's going on. That's going off. So it, it's in. It's like TikTok in a way that you, anyone can just be discovered, like just like scrolling by, scrolling yeah. by. Like, okay, here's, you know, somebody playing Fortnite. Yeah, I always kind of find that interesting, and I think I think that applies to YouTubers and, mm-hmm. and a lot of these social medias is, is the kind of instant fame that happens. Yeah, you know, and I, and I think a lot of people, I think there is some truth to the idea that if you if you build, work at something and you are consistent and you build mm-hmm. towards it, you will see uh, you know a following start to grow. Sure. But at some degree, there are these like overnight phenomenons, and I think Ninja is probably one of them. I don't oh, know. Oh yeah. Well. I think he's been at it as as long as, you know. Yeah, I I don't know. I'm not gonna. Could like, you imagine start though, like getting like imagine getting into a streaming situation to where you have to make the decision that you're like going to leave your say full time job and and like this is going to be me now. This is my life now. Could you imagine making that switch over? It you know and and that's what's crazy is like people do it with a medium amount of followers are like okay I've got you know. 50,000 subscribers on YouTube. This is enough for me to go, okay, I'm going to make the switch and quit my day job and just make content every single day, every single week. Yeah. I I read something a long time ago. It's probably old news. Mm -hmm. Um, but I heard that the basic breakdown for say YouTube, Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you're making original content and you're making the sole sum of the money, you Mm -hmm. know, you, you get dinged for copyrights and music, whatever. Yeah. Um, but I read that the easiest breakdown is to think of YouTubers in the way that for every million followers, Mm -hmm. you make 15 grand a month for every million, for every million followers. Wow. Could you imagine making fifteen thousand dollars in one single month? How, what, like, what's the math on that? Like, like fifteen thousand. Let's just say you have one million, right? You just broke the one million, yep. you know, ceiling. Like, I'm, I'm there. I've got a million. And just to say, subs. you are making fifteen thousand dollars a month. Times that by twelve. What is that? Just for my ads. Fifteen times twelve math. is like. 180 uh, something 180 no 180 thousand yep 180 thousand dollars almost 200 grand a year just well into your six figures yes and like how and that's probably what one video a week i mean if you're in it but if you're if you're pumping out more than one you're you're gonna probably get more viewership that's probably increases the price i imagine could you imagine doing that for a living wild I would that that would be fantastic. You would love it. I'd love to do that. Yeah, absolutely. What kind of videos would you make if you if you were do if you like were at the height? What do you think is gonna be your? I your love. Genre? Okay, so I kind of lately have really gotten obsessed with David Dobrik. Um, Huge. I'm kind of late in the game on this one. I am a. I have two of his sweatshirts. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm kind of embarrassed. I said that out loud. I'll be <laughs> Exposed. Um. Wow. And um, so him and um, Mr. Beast is the other one I've been le- watching a lot lately. See, Mr. Beast, I can't get on Not, board with. You know, he's he's a lot of hype. and um, He gives uh, things away. That's the, the, bit, right? the point is, is these videos that are just so, like, big budget, like, they're using their platform to just do, like, ridiculous, 
like things giveaways and like and li- like these giveaways and these lifestyles that are just so like so I don't know if I would do that. I would want to find a you know, a happy medium between like outlandish like crazy awesome videos every week and mm-hmm. like you know, something of of substance that's like actually, you know, I get to flex my creative muscles. Yeah. You know, so I I don't even know what that would be. I think the idea of having um, that kind of disposable income, mm-hmm. like you said earlier, you, you have a lot of that. And, you know, so I think, I think yeah, having that kind of disposable income would be so cool. I like David Dober because he gives away a lot of stuff, a lot of cars and stuff like that. And yeah. I think um, totally cool. he's, he's, he's a really, he seems like a solid dude, you know, and, and, you know, but so funny is he talks about the stress of that job too. And the right. idea of like having to put up content. Once you have a following, it's not just about having a following. It's about keeping up with the mm-hmm. Joneses, you mm-hmm. might say, on, on what's hot. Well, and, and be and topping yourself every time. Okay, now I've done this. Where where do we go from this video? Okay, we did this next thing that's crazy. Oh, we, we just gained another million followers. Okay, how do we like mm-hmm. that? W- that would be the race with yourself at some point. Yeah, I think that also, too, he's doing the he, David Orwick's in this weird area now. I don't know if mm-hmm. you watch any of his stuff now. Oh, he doesn't have any new content on YouTube, but. If you follow him on social media, he's in this mm-hmm. weird thing where he's transitioning from a YouTube star to like into TV, into television. He's hosting yeah. shows. He's yeah. being guests on on Jimmy Fallon and, mm-hmm. and uh, Drew's new show, Drew Barrymore's new show, and yes. whatever that is. I don't know. Whatever. Uh, the nonsense I think like is. that that transition though is probably it's got to be hard too because you're you're kind of your own boss on YouTube and then well, and it's really it's really showing I think the potential for these you know kids basically that are starting on their computers and on their phones Mm -hmm. are becoming like celebrities and like it's a viable you know it's it's shown that it's a viable platform now for years but like it's okay now it's not just like the kids are making videos anymore yeah no these are these are creators now i love that the idea like you know i um my mom's a school teacher Mm -hmm. as a lot of my family is and they, you know, they do this project just like any other thing where you kind of, you know, look at your future and decide what you want to be when you grow up. And she'll tell you a lot. A lot of people will, a lot of these kids will say YouTubers. They will say, you know, YouTubers, Twitch streamers. And that's like the idea that society has normalized this specific profession mm-hmm. into something that, that felt like a hobby when it started. Absolutely. And now it's something that is something that can be so viable. I and, love it. I, I think it's fantastic. What is your experience level with TikTok? Let me tell you. Um, that's a great question. Mm-hmm. TikTok is, it's huge. Mm-hmm. As you know, anybody that's listening to this, you've heard yeah. the name TikTok. And if you say you haven't, you're lying. <laughs> uh, let's just be honest here. Uh, I don't want the podcast. And uh, if you if you know someone who's legitimately never heard of it, mm-hmm. let us know in the email. Because <laughs> and we we'll, have we'll take on. care of them. Yeah, and we want to have them on. Because I want to, hey, you know. I think on? TikTok is... It's kind of a Vine remake. Anybody mm-hmm. that's old enough to remember Vine, um, I think it's uh, TikTok is kind of a a dangerous, slippery slope in mm-hmm. my opinion. You know, I think society more and more dangerously uh, and really historically normalizes kind of weird stuff. Yeah, um, and I think TikTok is no exception in that regard. Absolutely, it, it, it normalizes. You know, it, 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 there is a fun side where you're doing fun things, you're creating cool content. It's again, it was like that Vine. Instagram story combined, you know, and, and I think it, it has a lot of creative uh, materials, mm-hmm. which I love that. I love when people can kind of have a blank canvas, canvas, have a vision in their mind and create it using a simple tool that makes sense. And it's really free, right? Like if you have a cell phone, you can do it, you yeah, know? Anybody. So I think that, that, I think it is a cool tool. I think it is a dangerous, uh, these, <laughs> these trends that are coming out are, or just it, it, it scares me a little bit, you know. Like um, this is yeah, old I, news. I would love to elaborate uh, on yeah, that. This old news is like, but you know, the Tide Pod thing that, that was such. <laughs> yes. a, it was like such a meme and such a joke. But like this was legitimate. Like kids were actually doing this, you know. <laughs> and that to me is like, it's do you, dangerous. Do you think they were? Do you, you don't think, think they, they were actually? I I don't know. Were you there actually so? kids out there? Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. I, I no. Thought there was like I'm with you on that. 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 that was the whole thing for a while. Yeah, but like. If I was like five, I I would probably eat a Tide Pod. But is a five year old watching TikTok nowadays? Like, probably. And I don't even know if it was started by TikTok, but that's just like the, the it, outlining. It seems like that's you know. the where we're at. 
as yeah, a yeah, <laughs> and I don't I don't really love um, if I can be honest, like the dance trends. I think they're so mm-hmm. overrated and kind of I don't know. I mean, I they're they're cool, but and I think what you're getting out of it really is like what makes it fun is you trying to do it. And I guess mm-hmm. there's no harm in that. Right. Yeah, and sure. like in the sense that if you see something on TikTok or it's say it's viral or it's popular, you know, it is fun to try and learn it. Right. Mm-hmm. I think TikTok sometimes can prioritize or make trends out of just material that I don't think is worth it. Like, Cardi B's song or whatever. What's that song called that she just released? It's like super. Yeah, it doesn't talking about WAP. <laughs> yeah, that one. <laughs> I think I think that's I think that song <laughs> is I, I I think like that's just in my opinion it's just not a great song and I don't sure. like it and it's that's my opinion of yeah, course yeah of course this is the first time we're getting controversial on that podcast. Oh, I'm I'm for you it. Know, you know, but I, I like if I if I if I take a stand on that I I think I think it's a terrible song and I think. The reality is um, we need to be more responsible as uh, just as a society and as individuals. And, sure. You know, and I think it's easy that, you know, somebody made up a dance or I don't know if it was from a music, the music video or not, but somebody made up a dance to that specific song. And that's what that and that's what caught fire. Right. And the dance was fun or whatever. Mm-hmm. Right. But the reality is like that song's being used, which means that song is rewarding the artist that's and the artist the gets richer. Right. And so that's. I'm, I'm, I'm big on, you know, promoting, uh, being mindful of what you're promoting. Mm-hmm. And I think with TikTok, the trend based, you know, kind of culture can, has a dangerous side to it. I mean, that's why well, I think you nailed it too. Um, when you said it's, it's weird trends, like things that are just like weird and off, yeah. like off the cuff and like bizarro humor is so mm-hmm. in right now. And I and I see these memes that are like Gen Z humor, and it's like so like you look at it and it's like, just like they have these things called deep fried memes, if you, if you know what I'm talking <laughs> Never about. Heard of them, but it's it's those it's <laughs> just pictures of like a meme, but it's like all blown out and like you know. Can we get some on the screen? We're I would gonna. Love to do I need that. an example of a deep fried meme on sure, the screen. Sure, sure. Um, but the my my point in bringing this up is I think the trends is more part of art than we think it is because art is just reflecting life. And especially this year, you know, Mm -hmm. we've been talking about the pandemic and everything, um, is that society and like Mm -hmm. what's normal and in, in the news and everything, all of it is so like stranger than fiction Mm -hmm. that this new generation that's coming up is reacting in a way that's just like, you know, it's kind of like oh. almost nihilist, like nothing matters because this is just what we're about. <laughs> it's just so <laughs> like I and I feel almost funny explaining it in this way. But it's like that is like the Gen Z humor It's like, mm-hmm. deep you know memes. what I mean? It's deep fried memes because, I love you that know, somebody named it deep fried. Oh, yeah. 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 That specifically. But like, you know, the TikTok and and I and I brought up TikTok because I ultimately wanted to talk about the um, the Ratatouille musical. (laughs) Um, So so this is and and I'll preface this and say I was very resistant to TikTok. Um, I right when it came out, I was like, I don't get it. Like I kind of felt the same way. I was like, this is just like a like weird stuff, you know, and I didn't really get it. And I was like, the the more I watch these kind of short videos, it is very similar to Vine, where yeah. the medium has just changed. It's just shorter videos, and this Ratatouille musical is really baffling me because these I don't even know who was the first person to start it, and maybe one it, of my it's, it's like a like a guy like someone first started with like a set design. Well, I saw the first video I saw was a girl who wrote a song as. The main girl in Ratatouille. I forget what her name is. So, like... Colette? So, one person, like, did a TikTok. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I sound like an old, old man. <laughs> did it was, like, TikTok. She did a, a couple TikTok. different people started making jokes, like, oh, And it was like, okay, this is the song for the, uh, you know, the big finale of the Ratatouille musical. This is like, the opening that number. Exist. This is the opening number. And, like, wrote a song. And it's, like... And incredibly now it's, well produced now it's all these people that TikTok. are they're all doing like submissions to the ratatouille musical so it's mm. like my submission as ego and it's like the ending and like they just write so like, like, and like people dressing songs. and and you know tiktok is like they're they're all dressing up in these costumes Can't just fire like quick too. The, yeah. the production value for 
<laughs> like juxtaposed with the the content is yeah. which was which is what gives it this mm-hmm. air of like oh this is like a whole thing that mm-hmm. they've created just people like posting videos okay here's me like when the when um remy's dad is like digging through the trash so this is the song he would sing and it's like a full written song it's like composed they have like, costumes they have lights there's literally today i saw a picture like a very well done illustration of a puppet that someone would wear as remy and then the dad and it was like full on like, and it's somebody you know somebody like sketched, designed like, the costume the design bill like wow. it's all of these people separate people they're not all together but they're joining in on this choreographing numbers and then there's memes within that joke too where it's like like point of view pov of your you went to go get a drink at intermission and it's like all the drinks that they would have in the lobby the menu and the really? lobby of the ratatouille music okay here's the stage hands backstage here's their banter in the backstage um, at just the, really quick i'm gonna pull up the um oh yeah. show us the, the the playbill because that would really playbill. i'm gonna try and yeah. And let me tell you, the finale is incredible. It has can... four part harmony. Really? It's, it's really beautiful. So it's this whole thing has like just been manifested by people making these ridiculous videos. Yeah. And it feels like it's a cohesive thing. And I don't know. It like it just tickles so much, me. So, so much so that Patton Oswalt tweeted about it. Open it up first, by the way. He tweeted about actually let's see, let's see. Mm-hmm. doing. Let me pull up that tweet real quick. Yeah, I think um, the question I, I wonder about all this sounds incredibly amazing. <laughs> um, but the question yeah, that I wonder is, do you think that something like this could have only started on on TikTok, or could it have could it have started, or do you think the idea of the imagination and like we talked about the tools being opened up, kind of being reimagined in TikTok, is what inspired these people to you know kind of take it to the next level what do you think and i guess you know we've had this conversation kind of similar to um like the british invasion um kind of the same but different uh where there's like why do certain bands get famous you know like did the beatles get famous because they were so talented at that time Or, like, was technology in the right place for them? Did they happen to be four kids that lived in Liverpool that, like, did the stars just align and they, like... Is there a strategy behind creating something that you know will be popular, right? That's that's it. Like, you know, if I live... If I move to Los Angeles, and that's what these kids are doing now. I keep saying kids. I'm I'm 24 years old, so yeah. I'm not I'm not going to age we myself. Share that. We share um, that. Yikes. But but it is. It's 16, 17, 18 year olds that are moving to Los Angeles. Charlie D'Amelio is a big TikTok fan, and yeah. she's 16. Yeah, and, and her her net worth is already at four million dollars. And this is kind of like across <laughs> creators too, yeah. YouTubers and different things. Is they're moving to Los Angeles to live in a big flop house with a bunch of other YouTubers yeah. at seventeen, and they're making content and they're making millions, like hundreds of thousands of dollars and do you think there's a strategy oh look at this oh this is the playbill oh that and is somebody so this awesome. is a crowdsourced let me, let me get that out of yeah way. wow somebody just designed that and oh my gosh <laughs> couldn't you totally see it yeah I mean, so that's the little playbill and i think the best thing that ever came out of that is that the people who are making up the songs and stuff yeah then out of that dancers and choreographers will duet it and be like, okay, this is the big dance break that'll go with it. Whoa. And it is le- like legit. The real musical theater kids are coming out <laughs> for this. <laughs> it's yeah. just so no, strange. What else are they gonna do in quarantine, right? I mean, come on. I oh, and this yeah. really was, you know, I mean, we talk about it all the time, but it, this year is gonna be so interesting for the rest of the decade. I think. I think like, it's this what we're see, what we're experiencing now, and and you again, people have heard probably. And, you know, if you're somebody who looks into something like this, but the effects uh, that this year is going to have on the education system and and anything and even Pop the culture, arts, you know, you know, like there, the, I, I, I could see I can see, you know, arts and like musical theater. I can see that stuff being created around this time period, you know, like, like a new like renaissance, like yes. absolutely, because because that's that's all we got. Like, yeah, like this we is should, what's happening. We should start writing like a play, not a musical, like a legit play about a one man quarantine play. 
You know, mm-hmm. like, like I, and mm-hmm. I, because if we don't write it, somebody else is going to, you know. And so and so that's that was kind of my point with I bring, bring up the British invasion. Like, are all of these fantastic artists coming out of a, a certain area because that was where art was coming from? Or did they just happen to like be in the right place at the right time? Was there something like, in the water? Was yeah. there something going on or we're Yeah. You know, it's like this weird, beautiful kind of um like plan Mm -hmm. right like to some degree you know like we talked about what's the strategy to make it in you know let's say entertainment today Mm -hmm. you know and what what was the strategy back then when the beatles were hot you know it's like i i don't think i think that's what drives people mad and that it it keeps people up at night in the sense like how do we break how do we figure this out yeah and the reality is it's always about i think it's about timing i think Mm -hmm. You, what you're seeing now, too, is what you'll see, too, as we come out of quarantine and as we get a handle on the coronavirus, is you'll see a new surge of people coming out uh, with fame and with popularity because all of that time in their stuck in home, uh, I think, made a lot of people go, I'm just going to do this. Mm-hmm. You know, I've been talking about it for, for six months. I'm gonna, I mean, that's really what start what was the cause of this podcast is like i had the idea to do something it was of course it, it was collaboration between mm-hmm. you and i but we i had a loose format for something like this and it wasn't until the quarantine happened that i was like i'm just gonna go ahead and like shoot my shot you know i'm gonna make it happen and i think that's what we're gonna start to see coming out of quarantine is we're gonna see a new wave of artists creators and they're all going to be um, people because you know and, and had corona not not existed or never happened i don't think we would have met these legion of of creators because i think they're being inspired by being stuck at home to say you know what i uh, i'm gonna i'm gonna just i'm gonna do this you know just seems like it was the give you know like there was so much building up to it for some reason mm-hmm. and then once once we do we're you know okay now just in concept like everyone's home mm-hmm Okay, now like, and now I have I have access. All I've got is access to the internet. Like, it it, it had to be TikTok. It had to be you know social media. Like, do you I, have it downloaded now? I do. So and and I frequently uh, you know I I get funny ones from my sister. Will send me funny TikToks, and I don't browse it regularly yet. Yeah. But I'm it, feeling it dangerous. You go down that road. You go down that road. Yeah, I don't have it either. I don't have it. Um. I had it when it was Mm -hmm. just coming out. I never created an account, but you can like, as you know, if you've had TikTok, you can like have TikTok and watch TikToks without having an account. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, And that's what's crazy is you don't need subscribers. You don't need like you can follow people, but it's like anyone's TikTok can get seen by everybody. Yeah. And that's what's crazy. And I think what that that'll this new generation will gravitate towards that. It's like, there's little to no, like, I, I'm going to softly say this, but there's, like, less work to it yeah. as opposed to, like, a YouTube channel or, like, whatever else. If you, you – does that – would you agree with me on that? You think that there's more work for TikTok? Less work. Oh, less no, I think there's TikTok. less effort, I guess. Like, like a joke – I guess for me, yeah. I see it as, like, any funny thing I want to put out – Yeah that can like low effort jokes now are just as viable as like a high effort absolutely. David Dobrik video. Absolutely. Like it's this, it's on almost the same level does because that, does that make you angry though? A little bit. Uh, I, I think that's why I was so resistant to it right away. Cause like it's like bitter almost you know? too easy for like, you. you. And you it's just, also like you have a 60 second limit on any video. It was kind of the TikTok. same as vine. Like, same as vine. What, because what the did you get on vine? Is, like the payoff six is so seconds much more. or something. 10 seconds. Yeah, it's yeah. Like, I think Vine was like fifteen second max. It's so it's so low stakes. Whereas YouTube, it's like any joke that you make has to be a full formed bit. And maybe not. Like you know, there's there's short videos on YouTube too. I think it's just solely for the fact that you have to search up a video to find it. You have to have subscribers. You know, so it's like it's for not it to like, legitimately get seen. Some, you're not just like, scrolling like John through. John said some are just like a shot in the dark, like or some sure. random thing will go viral. Absolutely, and we'll never probably never figure out the what's going to be viral next yeah but, i wonder um, i wonder the impact and this is an interesting question for everybody of course mm-hmm. um it, the impact of you know content historically becoming shorter and shorter what kind of 
you know, uh, behavioral impact it'll have on people. Mm -hmm. As you know, like a lot of people, you know, they won't watch a lot of, if it's longer than five or six minutes there. I mean, that's why David, I think a lot's a why a lot of the reason David Dobrik is popular because his is four minutes and 20 seconds. Now it's, of course it's like some sort of, it's a joke of course, yeah, but, right, right. but I think that, <laughs> that content, that window between is every three single to five, vlog the same four minutes and 20 seconds. Yeah. That's funny. I never noticed that. And his I, 400 and tw wait, 420th video was a big one. I'm sure. sure. <laughs> and uh, he made it 14 minutes and 20 seconds because, it, and he gave away three cars. Wow. Um, I didn't get to that one. I got to watch what that. What did he do? He, he gave a lot. Yeah. I mean, I, I really like his stuff. I've been, wa I feel like I've been watching since the beginning, but that's not actually true. I've been watching him for a long time. He used to post Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So, sure. It was like, and I, and I, do you ever get caught in this where you're watching somebody who you know has a posting schedule and you get like kind of antsy to watch mm -hmm. it? Like that's how I was with David Dobrik. Like he did, he was doing Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and then he sw switched to Monday, Friday, and then he kind of dwindled out. But I remember, I'll tell you that Monday to Friday vlog was, and I think it was the catch because it was, his vlogs were so short mm -hmm. that it was over in four minutes or over in five minutes, you know? And, and you're and, ready to see the next one by the time the first one is going. And I, and at that point, like I, I literally seen them all. Like I, I started watching him, like I would say probably in the hundreds, Sure. but then I went back and, and made my way back up and then I kind of kept with it. Um, and then some, some of them get taken down. That's historic for him. Like, you sure. know, you watch, like I watched a few where, you know, you go the next day and it's gone. You know, he, he, he for had, a weird, had a weird relationship with YouTube. He doesn't make any money on YouTube, which is ironic because he gets right. tens of millions of views. Crazy now. He after that whole ad apocalypse, right? Yeah, and I think well, he he also uses people's music. Like he he is in that sense, he knows what he wants, and mm -hmm. he won't compromise based mm -hmm. off of uh, what he'll he'll lose money. Demonetizing for. because right. of copyrighted so he, music. He'll use a lot of popular songs, which like. In for the moment that is play, being played, it's like perfect, and at the same time, it's like he's losing money over mm -hmm. it. But I think uh, that's what I kind of like about him is he's so specific and so like, kind of loyal to the moment. Mm -hmm. uh, he doesn't let the idea of losing money uh, change his vision by you know adjusting the music or sure. or taking out a reference, right? He and I do. So I really admire that. that. I think that's like yeah. the the quality. I guess to to sum this whole conversation up, yeah, I, I th please. And uh, what actor would play me in the movie? Oh um, wow! Go oh my gosh! Wow. Remember you that old number? That. <gasps> I'm Circle so back. sorry. Uh, it's gonna be uh, Chris Pratt. Oh yeah, Chris. That's I was gonna say Ashton. Ashton? Ashton. Ashton Kutcher. Kutcher. Ashton Kutcher. I don't know, man. But I'm a little confused. The people by that, that know me I don't want to hurt may <laughs> say otherwise. Hey, listen, if you want it to be Ashton, it's Ashton. Okay. Sounds like it's gonna be Chris. Now that we're circling back, I feel like um, I found a good picture of Jake Gyllenhaal that I feel like looks like John. Oh, Jake. You guys Gyllenhaal? can weigh in on that. <gasps> oh, you're okay. Right. I see Doesn't it. Doesn't that make more sense? I see that. This is what I mean by I don't know actors. Like mm -hmm. I, I know mm -hmm. Steve Carell because I watch The Office every single night. <laughs> like that's really, honestly a lot of why I chose him. I'll be honest. I love it. Or um, I was thinking Ed Helms, but he doesn't have a beard. Ed Helms is funny though. Ed Helms. I can he see plays that. Andy in yeah, the yeah, office. Yeah, yeah, sure. I love The Office. Oh, I love that show. All right, what are we talking? Wait, how first uh, my of all, what point, time are we at? We're we're just about at our at our oh, end here. 58. Oh, we're good. We're, we're, we're good. just about okay, at the we're, end we're here. We're wrapping it up. All right. Sorry. Um, I think, and, and we had this conversation when we were conceiving this podcast. Yeah, is <laughs> quality outweighs quantity? Should weigh out. Wait. Should. It should outweigh quantity. It doesn't yeah. always. And I think that's some tea she dropped some. I think <laughs> if I could try and follow the trajectory of culture and um um social media and, and trends and all of that, yeah. I I want to say that quality in the long run is going to do it, but do you think quality is reigning right now? No. You think it's quality. I th I, it's, you I know, agree with you. It's it's hard to say because what is quality? Like what what defines like if my dumb sixty second joke is seen by a million people and they all love it on TikTok? Well, who's to say that's not like as interesting as a four minute video of David Dobrik giving away a, a Bugatti? You know? Yeah. I, I guess it's open ended. You know? 
that's what's so hard too about you know running into a, a medium that has is so saturated too. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you talk about well, we're creating a podcast here, yeah. which, which has is an a dead medium. Yeah, which <laughs> which, which is which. Well, it has a video element, so we're kind of crossing into two worlds. You know, sure. we'll be on YouTube and we'll be on all the podcast apps, but. I think, um, by the way, find us, I'm just kidding. You're listening to us. So you found uh, us. Check us out on Spotify. You found us. Um, I think and uh, for the audio listeners, uh, check us out on YouTube. Um, <laughs> yeah. What the podcast. I think that's the, uh, the hard part is, you know, is it, it, the quality loses its weight in, in, in such a saturated market like mm -hmm. podcasting or making YouTubes or TikTok even. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so I think you're I, I hope you're right. I think I hope that someday we we, we kind of arc back to the idea that. We're not going to give somebody credit because they put together a thirty, like a ten-second video, um, but we're going to put we're going to give them credit because they've they've put work into building their following, uh, you know, into many ten-second videos that have you know, kind of created a legacy for that person. You know, I think looking like kind of like we talked about earlier about, you know, again glorifying the right things. I think a lot of it will just will come back to the idea that we'll follow the people. And not necessarily the specific content trendy stuff. The trendy stuff will always come and go. Sure. The reality is, is like, can somebody make a trendy video and then keep the keep themselves in the ring? And I think that will be the difference. And you do that by making quality content. Absolutely, I agree. And so that that that's where I think you're like you're saying we're going to see the the downtick here is is people are we're gonna we're gonna start coming again. Life is going to resume. We're gonna start doing things. We're gonna be busy again. Mm -hmm. And so our our time is going to we've talked about time in the first episode. Our time is going to mean something. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's where uh TikTok, if I ever get a TikTok, which you know it's it's a good high You'll probability. You know, I it's I, gonna I, I like TikTok. I get TikToks from my sister all the time and I hate watching them through the Safari <laughs> app. So I'm I'm gonna do it do it just for that. But you know what I'm saying if I get TikTok, I imagine uh, you know, we'll start to develop people that we love and, mm -hmm. and we, we love them because of the stuff that making, I will say it happened for vine. Yeah. Same thing for vine, these creators and, and vine went away and, uh, the, the ones that were making actual content stayed and Sean just, Mendez, Sean Mendez oh got discovered on vine. Gosh. I started I, his kind of career there. He is so massive now. I, I literally Huge. forget that he was on vine, but yeah, you're, you're right. I mean, that's where the long term but, arc, but was he ultimately just a vine star? Of course not. No, now he's, he's really this, talented. He's super talented musician. And, um, he's doing, he just, his, Netflix I guess it's the, anyway, it's the people, yeah. right? That's what it's made me the, think of it. Yeah. It's the people. I, I think that's what, that's like you're saying, it'll creators. come back to quality. And the way that it'll come back to quality is that, you know, these one hit wonders will never survive long term. That, and that's the reality is the people that are, are dedicated to the craft that are putting in the time, uh, and Rise they're the now, top. they're now gaining credibility. Social media stars are now, are, are now have, they have their place mm -hmm. in, in the way, in the way we see the world now. And I think those people that really put into it and they stick to their time, stick, put time into it and they stick to their, you know, their bit or their brand. We'll, we'll, we'll see them. And that's encouraging. On. I think, I, I think agree. that's, that's not a bad place to be as, as creators. Yeah, I agree. And like, and just like in this, and just like in this, this actual endeavor here, you know, like we'll, we'll create content and we, and we do it because we love it and, uh, and we're passionate about it. And the reality is that if, if there is something to be had here, if there's something that we you know will catch the eye of, of listeners and viewers, you know, well then who knows where we'll be with this. Maybe this, I think it's someday uh, this could be our full time Christmas job. decorations, you know? <laughs> yeah. Next year we're going to go, um, a little, I mean, I love what we did in here. Don't get me wrong, but next year I think we're going to, we're going to bump it up and do Whoa. something more sleek. You know Whoa. what I'm saying? <laughs> But I'm all about this. I'm right. all about this. Who I think, knows? We'll I think you guys our, need to show off your mugs. We'll be in oh. our six figures by then. So um. if you're, yeah, if you're watching this online, which you should be, by the way, if you're listening to the podcast app, thanks, but also not <laughs> thanks. Um, this is a, a it's yeah. going to be a visual podcast. This is, you're going to need to see this in full HD. Uh, I think you're going to want to see it. Yeah, you're going to want to see us in full HD. We have our mugs. I, I, I bought us mugs this time. I think we, here, don't t hold me to this, but I'd like to get a different mug every time. Is that, is that Every crazy? single week you want a different mug. Oh, for Christmas. Oh, no, for Christmas. Right now, I'm talking about the Christmas series here. <laughs> I was going to say, we got a budget. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Podcast. Every wow. single week. And this whole wall will just be mugs. And the answer is yes. Okay, cool. So the, the next, next yes. week we might have something different, but let's, let's wrap it up. You know what we didn't do last time? Yep. I need you to, to tell us your socials. Uh, like, how do people find you? Absolutely. Um, well, I'm on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I am on Instagram 
at Ryan Tafoya. It's spelt phonetically. Um, John's going to go ahead and just superimpose go ahead them and, right here. Yeah, it's I've got an right. Instagram and I've got a YouTube channel. And uh, John, wouldn't you know it? This week, I started vlogging. I started a I consistent see, I saw vlog. You recording here and here, and I was. I thought you were joking. Oh but no, this is a, a real thing. That's a real thing. And my <laughs> first one dropped uh, today, the day of this recording, which is uh, November twenty fourth. Um, <laughs> put out my first one. Yeah, that shows you. I just dated the, the podcast, so sorry. Oh great. Okay, so we <laughs> can Christmas. find you. Like, we can find you on YouTube. Uh, the links will be below, of course, and they'll be on screen if YouTube you're watching. YouTube and Instagram, and um, uh, that's it. Today, November twenty fourth. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> really right merry christmas everybody oh. merry christmas and uh, john you? socials i'm on instagram uh that's all that we really need to know facebook's dead let's be honest um oh, and it's so true i'm creating i i i myself i'm not vlogging but i am trying to create more content on my own youtube page uh which of course will be linked below and uh it's 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 a work in progress i think uh youtube is uh, is a media that i love and hate at the same time so you know. same uh, so yeah, find us on social media if you want to find uh, well, find out more about our personal lives. You know, we're we're, we're not huge posters, but you know, I, I'm trying to be better at being consistent. Yeah, I think is going to be the ultimate key. Is yeah. like just consistency. I agree. So find us on social media, and uh, again, if you have any questions or concerns or anything you want to let us know, you can email us at podcast what the at gmail dot com. <laughs> that <laughs> someday we'll is fix the that. best. I'm gonna go ahead and just email <laughs> what the podcast at gmail dot com and beg for the domain. <laughs> we know, I, I didn't think about that. We could try that, but for right now, it's podcast what the at gmail dot com, and you can follow us on Instagram, which there will be an Instagram. Check us out, uh, and, and uh, uh, we'll let you know. With that. We want to say thanks for listening, and uh, this has been What the Podcast, and we're going to catch you at the same time, same place next week. Go wide. To the wide <laughs> shot. <laughs> Thank you so much to everyone. Uh,